Well, greetings everyone, and welcome back. What you're looking at on my scope right now is something that can happen on occasion where you have two frequencies you want to measure, one on channel 1 and one on channel 2. One could be a pulse, one could be a wave, you know, a sine wave. It doesn't really matter what the waveform is. The point being that they could be very different, particularly in frequency. And if you try to, I have the trigger set to channel 1 at the moment. And so you can sync that one up, but this one's such a high frequency, you can't sync that up. And if you, uh, you know, like, move the time base out, it's kind of jittering around and stuff. It's not really triggered on that one. But if you change the source of the trigger to channel 2, then the top one, channel 1, is no longer in sync. But you can sync channel 2, and you can stabilize that way for them. Well, that's no good, because, like I said, now channel 1's kind of messed up. So there is a way to take... Uh, a mode of triggering here that um, is available on most oscilloscopes. I just wanted to show it in the uh, Rigel DS1102E because that's the scope I have. What you would do is in, under trigger uh, mode, which is off the trigger menu, um, sort of edge or pulse or slope or video, if you move it down to alternate, so what that allows you to do is control the vertical uh, amplitude of both waveforms independently, the triggering levels themselves, you can control those independently, like you right now set it uh, to uh, channel 2, and then you can also set that to channel 1, and control the triggering up there, and again you can adjust the position on both of these, okay, the other thing is the horizontal time base. Depending on which channel you're set to here, you can control the timing. So notice how I'm adjusting the time base on the square wave, but I'm not affecting the sine wave up here. Okay. And then I can just switch to channel 1 and do the same thing on the sine wave, but not affect the square wave on channel 2. So it's they're independent of each other. All the settings are independent of each other. That also includes the horizontal position and triggering point as well. So I'm on channel 1, because you can see that down here at the bottom, um, these are highlighted, channel 1 and T1. Time 1 is for uh, channel 1. And then if I switch to channel 2, it switches over these two highlight. So now I'm doing the amplitude on channel 2 and the timing on channel 2 for triggering. Same idea. <coughs> So it's really handy. Another thing that you can also do, you can also measure like you would normally. Now, right now my source is channel 1, so if I turn that on, this is the data for channel 1. 10 kilohertz for the frequency. And then if I switch the source to channel 2, now it's went blue because my waveform color for channel 2, the square wave, is blue. And now you'll notice that the frequency is 1 megahertz, so they're quite different in frequency. So let's turn that off. So, it's, not, it's a nice feature to have. If you want to trigger um, in the alternate mode, you can independently control the waveforms, regardless of their uh, frequency or waveform type. It's a, a really handy feature to have. So that's about it for that. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And uh, always please subscribe and share and like if you, uh, if you like. And we'll see you next time. 7-3.